Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and you can find me at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Snow Dogs Vlogs. Ooh. So right before we started podcasting, I was washing my hands, and the tiniest little drip of water shot off my hand and onto Rizzo's back. We have hardwood floors, so she started peeling out across the house, just having a meltdown like she was part mogwai and she was going to multiply or something. I don't know, but she was just doing laps around the house a few minutes ago, and now she's kind of curled up in the corner looking at me just all big-eyed over like a drop of water. I picture your cat running around the house like the Wicked Witch. I'm melting, oh, melting. Oh, what a world. She was. And it's great because they don't pass you by because for every 20 steps they're taking, they're going about two feet because of my hardwood floors. And then the other cats start going away like a bowling ball when it hits the other pins, just like boom. And yeah, it's it was Meltdown City here just a minute ago. Why are you upset? What's going on? The end of the world is coming. Yes, yes. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> how's, uh, how's Kira doing? Uh, she's, you know, she's a puppy. <laughs> wow. I don't know how to handle this because you're like, I can't wait for a puppy. Now you have a puppy. You're like, somebody do something about the puppy. No, she's actually, I, I really have absolutely no room to complain. Um, she has been amazing. She, I sleep all the way through the night. She wakes up every morning at about 8 o'clock, 8.30. She gets up, we go outside, and she literally runs back down the hallway to go lay back down in bed. And she wants to stay in bed till about 9 o'clock, 9.30. And then she's up. Then it's like, okay, it's time to eat. We need to do things. Like, Memphis never did that as a puppy. When Memphis would get up to go to the bathroom in the morning, that was it. She was up. She wanted to do stuff. Right. Kira's like, well, I really like this bed thing. This is cool. Let's stay here. <laughs> does she Now that she's getting a little older, does she have any little quirks or unique things that she does that the other dogs don't do? So every single time, and I was telling uh, Jamie this the other day, that this is probably my favorite thing about her Every time we wake up in the morning, like if I don't open my eyes and look at her, she doesn't like she she knows I'm there, but she doesn't really react. But as soon as I open my eyes and she sees that I'm looking at her, it's like it's the first time she's ever seen me. Aww. ever. She freaks out. It's the cutest thing in the world. She gets the little flat ears and she gets all wiggly and she's all excited. <laughs> it's like just the cutest thing. But it's been an every morning thing. I don't know, maybe that's just going to be her thing for the rest of her life. Maybe. Where, you know, like Memphis does that with certain people where she gets really overly excited. Like when, when Eric comes over, she's super, super excited. Kira is like that with me every morning. And it's just, it's the cutest. And it's only in the morning. Like she's up there right now. I have the camera on so I can see her. You know, Jamie's up there as well. But uh, she's sound asleep. If I go up there right now, she's not going to react that way. She'll be excited, but she won't react the same way as she does in the morning. Yeah, that's probably because in her mind, you laid down and died. And then eight hours later, <laughs> she's like, oh, my gosh, you've emerged again. The feeder of foods. Like, <laughs> that's probably why she's excited. She knows what's up. Yeah, she's like, we're going to eat and we're going to go outside and we're going to do all the things. And it's going to be amazing. What did you guys do this week? Anything good? She started puppy class this week. Do you do those online or at home via webcam or do you actually go to the place? We actually go to a place. Um, so I started her off with one of the newer trainers in town. We're going to be missing like three of the classes out of the seven week class because of traveling to California twice. <laughs> do they give you homework? <laughs> uh, yeah. And because of that, the trainer that's doing it said she would do some one on one stuff with me if we need it, which is nice, you know, because I paid for the class. And then when we get back from California and we're we're kind of staying here for a while, um, I'm going to start her up with training with the trainer that helped me with Shelby, which is who I really want to work with. They're they're different style trainers, so I, I kind of want the experience with both. But um, it was very interesting. So the class has eight other puppies, and they range in age from nine weeks old to four months old. And we get to this class, and there's all these little stools set up that you sit on. And the puppy's supposed to be, you know, like in front of you. So this was the first class where everybody goes around and introduces himself and says what they want to learn and you know what do you want to learn the most and uh what do you like the most about your dog blah 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 so when you're in this class and i, and I just want to paint a picture for everybody at home with everybody else do they all know who you are right away do you even need to say i'm jess um so over half the class knew who i was because okay, your dog famous in the town right yeah yeah and a lot of people knew who she was because of some of the videos we recently did oh, and wow so that helped her, her out as, that helped her out as well yeah oh, okay. yeah so, a lot of people there knew who I was, um, which was, was kind of interesting. There was one guy that ha that's there that has his two kids there. And right away he was like, you know, talking about, you know who that dog is? And 
So that was kind of that was kind of oh, cute. That's cool. But, okay. um, Second question, real quick: Why do you need to go to the class if I mean you already know how to do all the things? What does the instructor do? Does she actually hold the leash of the dog and do the dog thing, or does she just tell you like, "Oh, your back needs to be straighter and like do this or that"? Or why do you need her? Um, I don't. But the benefit of going to puppy classes with a puppy is more for me like if if you've never had a puppy before definitely take puppy classes i like going because it gives me the opportunity to teach kira how to be around other dogs especially other dogs that she doesn't know so it's like the best controlled environment to show her that other dogs are okay you know or if a dog is acting out you need to come sit next to me you need to ignore the dog that's acting out and it's it's just the best environment to really teach her that. And that was kind of what, what happened when we got there. Um, so there's all these other dogs. There's like this nine-week-old puppy next to us and a four-month-old Akita across from us. And every one of these dogs is barking and jumping and pulling at their collars. There's like a Brittany Spaniel dog. I don't I think that's what it is. But anyway, it's like half choking herself trying to get to Kira. <laughs> Kira literally is looking around, sitting in between my legs, looking around, and then all of, a, all of a sudden she looks up at me, and I swear if she could have talked, she would have said, what the hell is wrong with all these other dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Are they pretty misbehaved? They were all, it's it's not that they were misbehaved, they're puppies. They have so a they learned behave. <laughs> exactly, where I've already worked with Kira on patience. I make her sit down when she gets treats. I make her sit down when she gets her food uh, with the other two dogs. You know, I, she can't be crazy because if she gets crazy and then they get crazy, you know, you just don't want that to happen. Plus, she's already been introduced to other dogs. She met Lana and Yoda, Eric and Corey's dog. And then the other day, Axel and Ruger came over. So she's been around other dogs and she's already sort of learned not to act out around them. Mm. So when she, we're sitting in this little room with these other dogs, she was just looking at me like, what is wrong with all of these puppies? <laughs> I don't even want to deal with this. I swear I would bet money that as she gets older, her personality is more similar to Shelby's than Memphis. Ooh, yeah, I, well, I mean, you've met Memphis and Shelby. Memphis's attitude is, oh my gosh, this is the best moment of my life ever. You yeah. would be like, okay, I'm done hugging you now. I have to leave. And Memphis would be like, no, but just like five minutes more. One of the best memories was waking up in the morning and having her just in the bed, just laying there. Right. Just the greatest. Shelby, I hung out with her a little bit, but she was very much a cat to me. Yes. Very yep. much a cat. 100%. Shelby is her own self. Yes. She doesn't need you to be around. She doesn't need, like she, and that sounds bad. She loves people, but she's very independent. She's not needy. Right. She's not, well, unless she's, unless it's nighttime and she wants something. Like if she wants to go for a walk or she wants to go outside, she becomes this needy, whiny, <laughs> horrible thing. But that's just Shelby. She tries to get what she wants. Um, Kira is really, really happy to see people and really, really happy to experience new things. But at the same time, she has this take it or leave it attitude that Shelby had, like when she was younger. Like, I just feel like as Kira gets older, she's going to be that dog that's like, you can pet me, but meh, I don't really need you to pet me. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is more to make you happy. Yes. I feel like she's, I, I feel like she's slowly getting that attitude already where <laughs> she's like, she's very confident. She's very confident. She's not afraid of anything. She's just, um, I, you've been to our house before we have the dog a-frame out in the yard right. that the dog can play on if, if you don't know what an a-frame is it's for dog agility it's like a big ramp um we had one years ago and it started to fall apart it was made out of wood so jamie and i took the whole thing apart redid the frame on it rebuilt the whole thing used the wrong wood for the decking on it because <laughs> i don't even know i don't even know how we did that we thought we bought one thing whatever it was even when we got it home, we knew it was wrong, but we'd already started working on it. We're like, we'll just use this for the decking, and then when it goes bad, we'll just replace the decking with the wood we should have used. So last year, uh, not long after Oakley passed away, Jamie was tipping it down to fill in some holes because the dogs dig underneath it, and the decking on it broke. Oh. It was it, it had soaked up a bunch of water, and it just when he tipped it down, it just fell apart. So then it became dangerous and it was already getting close to winter and we we're like, you know what, we'll just, we'll take the decking off of it, we'll put it in the garage and we'll fix it next year. Well, it's next year. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep looking at it going, oh, 
we gotta fix it. It's heavy. The wood that we have to get is heavy. We've gotta paint everything. We've gotta have to have the time to do it. It kind of has just become like I miss the A-frame because it's kind of like I don't know. It was always one of Oakley's favorite things to be underneath. So it not being in the yard, kind of like not having a third dog in the house, is just one of those things. Every once in a while, it's like that reminder of it's gone. Mm. So I didn't like not having it. So we had planned to build like this whole dog, like a play, not a playhouse, kind of like a raised ramp that we were going to put an A-frame on, but there was also going to be like a decking on top of okay, it. Okay, so like the a box ramp, yeah. Yeah, so the dogs could lay on top of it, more like a kid's play thing than a dog's play thing. So we had it all figured out, and we were going to build it, and, you know, it wasn't going to be cheap, and we... It wasn't going to be cheap. It was it was going to... It was like a building a deck, so it wasn't going to be cheap. We wanted it to last. So we've been going back and forth, like, drawing and figuring out how we're going to do this, and we're like, it'll make a really cool video, and we'll show how to build it. And then I was on Facebook the other day, and a friend of mine who trains agility put up an A-frame a solid aluminum or an all aluminum A-frame uh -huh. which if you buy these things brand new it's actually a uh, competition grade A-frame if you buy them new they're anywhere between $2,500 to $3,700 so wow that's expensive for what looks to be two ladders and some duct tape yeah they're very expensive they're not cheap and that was why I never bought one fully made i'm like i'm not spending that much money on something i can build cheaper out of wood yes it's not as convenient but whatever so anyway she put this thing up for sale for 250 dollars, and i messaged her immediately and i'm like janet and janet's actually the trainer that helped me train shelby that i'm gonna take kira to the next time around i'm like janet i want the a-frame <laughs> and she's like if you want it it's yours i'm like no i want the a-frame like i will mail you a check and figure out how to get it to my house i want it <laughs> how far away is it um she only lives like 15 minutes from our house but the problem was is the trailer we have was too small for it my brother's got the lawnmower on my dad's trailer because he's been going back and forth to the, his old house cutting the grass there so we didn't really want to be like hey get the lawnmower off the trailer we need to use this we were trying to figure out how we were going to get it home and and then jamie goes it'll fit in the back of your jeep I'm like, it's like nine feet tall or eight feet tall, whatever it is. I'm like, it ain't gonna fit in the back of my Jeep. He's like, yeah, well, we'll just close the door on it. I thought it was gonna be too wide. So we drove out there, the what was it, two days ago mm -hmm. and uh, brought Greg with us because it's heavy. It is aluminum, but it's heavy. And he was right. It fit in the back of my Jeep, about two feet of it stuck out the back and he tied the back door down and we brought home the new A-frame. Nice. Sure enough, we had it set up. You know, Greg helped him set it up and they got it all level and everything. And I have it in a vlog which I can post on Podbean if you guys want to watch the vlog. Um, I have the moment the dogs got to go outside and see it. And sure enough, Memphis goes flying out the back door and ran straight up that A-frame. <laughs> and within minutes, Kira was like, this is the greatest thing ever. I can run up this. And could have cared less. She was fearless. It took me eight weeks to get Shelby to climb up an A-frame. Kira did it without me even asking her. Oh, really? <laughs> what about you? Did you make it up the A-frame? I, did, I didn't try to go up the A-frame. Maybe you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> but that's good that she ran up there. What about Shelby? Did she go right up it as well? Yeah, Shelby ended up going up it too. I got her to go up and down it. And uh, we we made sure that it's because of the puppy, we don't want it to be to like competition level height. It's got a chain on it so you can make it like lower so it doesn't have as high of a peak. Mm -hmm. And we usually leave ours like that because it also provides the dog shade in the backyard. So we have it as low as it'll go. And I think that's part of the reason that Kira doesn't find it scary either. So, yeah, they now have an A-frame again, and it was funny. I was sitting in the backyard, and Jamie was working on his doors for the garage, and he came and sat down, and he goes, do you like it? And I'm like, I just feel like the backyard looks like it's supposed to again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it without it beforehand. Uh, yeah, like, I, and when it wasn't there, it was, it, it was sad. It was missing. And on top of that, you know, I make YouTube videos all the time, and the people that would be like, where's the A-frame? And oh. Oakley's A-frame is gone, and I'm like... The, so the biggest difference now, the old one we had was blue and yellow. This one is green and yellow, which I think I'm going to keep it green and yellow until it needs to be painted. And when it needs to be painted again, I'll paint it blue and yellow. But like my tunnel is blue, or I mean green. My tunnels are green and my jumps are blue. So it's perfect. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. So when you're at... When you're at the first week of dog eat class, is there... Do you guys do stuff or is it mostly everybody's just sniffing butts and getting used to each other? <laughs> You learn a lot about um, keywords and things to teach your dog. Like you, you learn about 
the importance of not repeating yourself, which a lot of people who train dogs make that mistake. When you tell a dog to sit, you literally, you're supposed to be saying sit, not sit, 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 sit. You see how annoying that gets? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, to a dog, when you're doing that over and over and over and over, all it does in their little brains is go, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why are you excited? That's an excited voice. What's going on? Why are we excited? They're not focusing on anything. So, you know, the, the trainer was kind of talking about the importance of that and then the importance of your reward command. Like, not everybody rewards with food, which I do food rewards. Um, some people just reward with like a word. Like when they do something right, you say yes or yay or good girl, but it's only supposed to be used in as a reward. So like if I want to tell Kira she's a good girl when she comes up to me and I'm giving her love and affection, that's not the same word I'm supposed to be using when she goes to the bathroom like she's supposed to. Yeah. So like they teach you all that stuff. And then we worked on the look command and the sit command, which are the first two things most puppies learn i don't think out of all the dogs i've ever owned growing up i don't think any of them ever did a thing ever ever well they don't know how to do it automatically you kind of have to train them yeah nope (laughs) (laughs) they all were level they all were level one dogs maybe i should have given them um, food for things i I respond really well to food (laughs) see see that's how it works yep yep (laughs) yeah just deliver me some food i'm good to go so how many weeks of these classes is like a six week package or an eight week package and when you buy the packages do they like say like oh your dogs will guarantee to do these four things when you leave it's a seven week class so and it's beginners like puppy classes it's not even beginners training it's it's puppy classes and you can actually go from puppy classes do that seven weeks and then if your dog's doing well enough then you go into beginners training and then if your dog's doing well enough from that then you go into intermediate training so you can actually go through and do more advanced type things Uh as your dog gets older and learns things and then competitions yeah you can do agility training and i believe ellie teaches like canine good citizen stuff and i think Nobody up here does barn hunt. I'm hoping soon somebody will do barn hunt. I really want to do barn hunt with Shelby, but... What is that? Is that when you hide, like, the the stuffed animal in the corner in the barn and then the dog's got to go find it? You hide a rat inside of PVC pipe (laughs) and you hide it in a bunch of hay and they have to find it. That's easy. It's in the hay. Well, yeah, but they have to, like, sniff it out and find it. I'd be good at it. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I missed my calling. Maybe. You should have been a dog. (laughs) Are you going to try to make her do a thing? Is she going to be famous or something? I mean, she's kind of already famous just for being with us. That's true. <laughs> I don't know what she's going to learn. It's really going to depend on how the next few weeks of training go. Like, as yeah, she gets older and she really starts to show her personality more, it'll be easier to figure out the type of dog she's going to be. Like, even though she ran up and down the A-frame, unlike Memphis and Shelby, who want to do it at full speed, she just kind of did it. So I don't, you know, I think she might, she'll try agility, but will she actually be an agility dog that I take to competition? I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. Well, how does she handle, like, game night? Because you have game night pretty much every Saturday night at your house where a bunch of friends that you've had forever come over, even though everybody yeah. knows who they are. Uh, how does she handle that? Is she good around the people? Does she like the company? Yeah, she does really good. We've actually, we've only had one game night since we got her. Uh, we were supposed to have game night last night, but so Greg was here for game night. Greg was here all day yesterday, actually. <laughs> we just kind of suckered him into staying all day mm-hmm. after he helped us with the A-frame. Um but Eric wasn't here because he had to go get, they went and bought a car, so they weren't actually here yesterday. And then my other friends that are normally here had a birthday party for their kids. I think that's what it was. So everybody that was supposed to come over this past Saturday all had stuff going on, so it was just us. But the first game night we had with everybody here, Kira loved it. She really likes people, which is good. I've been trying to get her like introduced to a lot of people. Yeah, so speaking of game night, So we had Greg over here, and like I said, he was here literally all day. And at about, I don't know, you know, the time when you get hungry, dinner time, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we didn't really want to go anywhere. Like, we we were having game night. We were all here having a good time, and nobody wants to leave. It's like, why should we have to leave and go get something? I One of the things about living in the middle of nowhere, we don't have enough people up here. One, that have online ordering, which I think is horrible. Every restaurant that has anything if you can order food from them they need to have online ordering i don't want to call and talk to people i just want to order my food and go pick it up but we don't have enough people up here that have online ordering or delivery we're so limited on the things we can get it's like what do you want pizza 
What else? During the week that we have a little bit more options, which is crazy to me. Really? During the week and at yeah, so like during the week and at lunchtime, like the deli, the deli delivers and has online ordering because we're amazing. And I set up the online ordering years ago when I worked there. Ahead of your time. Because I knew it was amazing. Yeah, we were one of the first people in Alpena besides Pizza Hut to have online ordering. Wow. See, that's good because yeah. up until then you could only get pizza delivered to your house, right? Or some form of Italian food. You could get, we could do um, pizza and grinders, um, which are like hoagies or whatever. Uh -huh. um, so we could do pizza <laughs> and grinders and then the deli delivered. But there was, a, there was a couple other like small sandwich shops. But the problem is like on the weekend, we have nothing. That's not entirely true. We have a Jimmy John's that is yes. so close to my house. It's ridiculous. But because I am one block out of the city limits, they will not deliver sorry man the lines outside your house right? <laughs> that's okay jimmy john sucks anyway yeah but at the same time when we're all here and it's game night and we're hungry and none of us want to leave sometimes it's like if we could just order that and have it delivered it would be so much easier i know right in, in our town before in our town before we got the Dean Dash and stuff, and we have a couple hundred thousand people in our town. You could only get pizza or Italian food delivered or Thai food. And Thai food's good sometimes, but like their ch chicken has like goosebumps when I get it. Like, I don't like, I don't know what's going on with their food. <laughs> so before that you couldn't get food. I mean, even at your place, you can't really get much. That's cool. that You could even get a sandwich delivered to your house. Yeah. And now like once we started doing, once the deli started doing like the online ordering and the delivery, it seemed like everybody else was like, oh, we should do this too. Yeah. And there were even like little sandwich shops in town where they only delivered corporate, like they only delivered to businesses. They wouldn't deliver to houses. So when we started doing it, it was like, oh, we'll deliver to anybody, you know, whatever. We, yeah. We'll take, we'll take your money. Yeah, I'll go to but, the seedy motel. It's okay. <laughs> right. And I think that's one of the reasons that the deli does so well. I still think to this day, over 60% of our business at the deli is delivery. I, be like, I believe it because even here, it, right before the Dean Dash craze, I could not get the stuff from the deli delivered to my house. Right. And that's just, I just, it, I don't know why it bothers. It's, it probably bothers me because our family owns the restaurant and because I see the benefits of online ordering you know, so like even when there's like I've had friends of mine open up small restaurants and things um, and I always say that I'm like, you got to jump on the online ordering and it, it they're always like, oh, it's just one more thing. You don't understand the online ordering is so simple yes. and half the time it integrates right into your POS system. So you're not on the phone for 20 minutes trying to get somebody to tell you what they want. You have less mistakes being made because people are able to do it all on their own. They're able to say what they want, how they want it all on their own. And I just don't understand why that's such a foreign thing to so many people in this town. I, I love it when Jamie and I travel just so we can do like Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash. I can get whatever food I want from wherever I want, exactly how I want it, and they bring it right to me. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it works out great. Blake's graduation was this weekend. I had or this last week. I had all my family members here. They were hungry. I had them come over to the computer. We purchased Habit Burger online. They had all the drop downs for extra mayo and pickles, and it was great. And I hit go. I paid. I showed up. I said my name like it was the magic words, and they handed me two bags, and out I went. Yes, I love, love, love that. And that's one of the hardest things about game night. Like, if we want to order from the Mexican restaurant, Mangoes, that we order from quite often. The problem we have with at game night is it's usually, there's usually, you know, four to eight of us here. When you're on the phone and you're trying to explain four to eight different orders, trying to order for pickup, it doesn't work. Everything gets screwed up. And then, of course, we've got, you know, my friend Matt is vegan so we're trying to tell him that he gets this whatever it is it's like potato enchiladas with no cheese and and they're always so confused every single time <laughs> it's like oh, what do you it expect this well it, it i i get that i get that it's confusing on the <laughs> phone but if they had online ordering it was so simple oh my gosh the drop downs yeah. and the things it was so simple i just don't understand it i the other day um I installed the McDonald's app on my phone because Jamie and I eat McDonald's for breakfast probably more than we should. Mm -hmm. But what's your go just, what's your go to McDonald's breakfast? I still like I still like the sausage McMuffin with egg, sausage McMuffin with egg, hash brown, and a drink. That, I mean, that's it's simple, it's easy, it's breakfast, it's eggs, it's right. real food. Like 
it's my favorite thing to get from McDonald's. And then sometimes, like, even at lunchtime, we'll be like, we can just get McDonald's breakfast because they serve it all day. But I'm kind of picky. Like, even at Sausage Egg McMuffin, I usually like the egg whites because I don't like the yellow parts of eggs. The other day I got on the app and I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. I can literally put in what I want, drive to McDonald's, and hit a button on the app that says, hey, I'm here at spot one. And they make the food as soon as I hit it and then bring it out to me. Well, and you've already paid online. I already paid online. I don't have to talk to, and I'm not trying to say I don't want to talk to people in the drive through That's this not the point of this. I'm just trying to say this is the streamlined, makes it simple. Holy cow. It doesn't take away jobs. Somebody out there is going to say that. Well, you do stuff like that. It takes away jobs. No, it doesn't take away jobs because what it does do is it streamlines the process and it makes it so more people can actually order food, which leads to them selling more food, which leads to them meeting more employees. Yeah. Trust me, I've actually done my research on yeah, this. That's it, actually it true. Should increase, <laughs> it should increase everything uh, all, all around. So you, you do have a curbside pickup. That's one thing I've never done before. That's the next thing that's big in our town. So I was outside. I, I'm right outside L.A., so I've seen the DoorDash and Uber Eats stuff for five years now, and it finally came to my town, and it was a success. Now when I show up to Target or Walmart, the first three or four spots are taken up by curbside pickup. And I, I was doing something at work because uh, the bikes that we sell are starting to do the same thing. And they were talking about how 70% of purchases in the last week of Christmas were all direct to store pickups like that's where the 70 percent of their margins came from is people ordering online at their local store and going locally and picking it up by sitting in a parking spot and having somebody bring it to you and do you tip those people is, is that what's happening are you tipping the mcdonald's lady i don't tip the mcdonald's people because they just it's the same thing as if i go through the drive through it's yeah. literally the same thing now the curbside pickup is a little bit different that i probably would tip so we don't have like our Walmart is actually getting the order, the curbside pickup. It's being installed. Like when I drove by the other day, they have all the things painted. I heard from a friend of mine that it's going to start this week. So we're, we're actually going to have that where you'll be able to get on your Walmart app. I'm not a big fan of Walmart, but you'll be able to get on your Walmart app, order all your things, drive and park, and they bring it out to you and load your car, which is pretty cool. We do have shipped when we got our Meyer, not long after we got our Meyer, we actually got shipped. So with shipped, it's kind of the same thing, only you pay $15 a month mm -hmm. and you can order your stuff from Meyer and somebody brings it to your house. Unlimited for 15 a month? Uh, yep. If you oh, order it's if you order cool. $35 worth, you don't have to pay like a shipping fee that or a delivery cool. fee, I mean. So I did shipped for a while, especially in the wintertime when it's minus five and you don't want to go anywhere, but you need groceries. <laughs> Yeah, and, and if you want to have shift to be successful, you probably got to hire 20 kids to go take stuff everywhere. So you'll get, you'll get so jobs out of it. The girl that uh, that almost always brought my... <laughs> it's just my one person. <laughs> well, there's multiple people, but I always tended to order the same time, and that was usually when she was working. Um, she said she makes really good money. She said there's days yeah. where she's making like $25 an hour grocery shopping for people yes and it's it's half of it and it'll settle down but it's a luxury um when doordash came to our town and when it does come to your town get it right away because the first month you don't have any delivery fees it's like oh it's new to this town no delivery fees i ordered ihop and they brought me pancakes i you don't know what life is jess until you've had pancakes <laughs> delivered have you ever had pancakes delivered to your house by a stranger no oh no. i have <laughs> I have, and she kicked over one of our pots when she uh, left the front porch. But anyway, those were some delicious pancakes, by the way. It's, you know, and up here, it's not just the fact that it's like, it's cool and it's a convenience factor. We live in the retirement town, and as much as people say old people don't know how to use technology, that's a bunch of crap. I know a lot of old people that have cell phones and have learned how to use apps. And when you look at the fact of when you're a little bit older and it's icy and cold outside and you don't have to go and try to walk through the store, I, realistically, mom, if you're listening, I'm using you as an example. My mom had her knee replaced a couple years ago, and her other knee isn't that great. So there are days where she goes to the grocery store only gets half the stuff she needs because she just can't walk any further or she can't get something that she needs because it's too heavy and she doesn't want to ask somebody for help or you know how people are especially right. parents I don't, want to, I don't want to inconvenience anybody yeah. so when I found out about the Walmart thing I told her I'm like mom you can just order all your stuff and they'll load your car for you it's... And she goes really and I'm like yeah and the Walmart one 
There's no monthly fee, and they don't charge you more than what stuff costs in the store. I don't know how they make money on it. I think it's just because... Volume. And that's the thing. They know they're going to sell more stuff. Yes, and I, I feel like it's that way at the bike shop. I'll load your bike up and unload it for you every time. If you want to pull up and honk your horn, I will do that. And if it makes everybody yep. in the town happy that you don't have to do anything but just drive up, I'll, I'll do that. So it's just, it's volume. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I have, I, I go back and forth with people sometimes on Facebook where they're like, you know, oh, it's just lazy. It's not, that's not what that is. There is a convenience factor, but there's also a time-saving factor. I could spend two hours grocery shopping what could I be doing in those two hours? That's two hours a week. Right. You could be I surfing spend, the net. Yeah, I can spend, yeah, right? I can spend doing nothing. But that's two hours a week I can spend doing different things with my dogs. That's two hours a week that Jamie can, and I can spend together watching a movie together or something. There, That's two hours that I can do something better than grocery shopping. Right, and, and, I, and I, f I feel the opposite side of it because I will never do this right now because I feel like, dude, I'll get up. You're, you're able, Dan. Walk inside. Get your stuff, get in the traditional line with two registers open and there's 14 blank <laughs> registers and just go out to your car. You're not lazy, but I do see the convenience and the ease of it. And it almost probably helps out people at the store because they can go gather it up. You're already charged. You don't have to stand in line and you're out of there. I've never tried it. Yeah. You should try it when it comes when it comes to your town. You should try it. I'm sure we will. I'm sure I'll even try the Walmart pickup, even though I'm not. A fa Ever since we got our Meyer, I think I've been in a Walmart. We've had our Meyer, what, two or three years now? I think I've been inside our Walmart maybe five times since yeah. then because I'm just not, I'm not a fan of Walmart. Right. Well, I it, just it'll take off through other stores. I bet you Meyer has the same thing going on by Christmas time. I have a feeling that especially because it's, but see, Meyer does offer curbside pickup at a lot of Meyers through shipped, but it costs $15 a month right. where Walmart's going to kill it with not charging the $15 Which a month. Walmart's correct because when you go through the drive through at McDonald's, you pay $0 a month for them to hand it out the window to you. It's the same right. thing. You ordered it up instead of on your laptop, you ordered it at the menu 40 feet away from the window where you paid the lady who also gave you your food and you're always right. confused because there's two windows and you don't know which one's open and ah, and it's the same thing as Walmart. You just pull up to the thing you already paid and ordered at the menu on your phone, and then they just bring it to your car. And the reality of this is this is what's going to save retail. Yes, for now. This, this is their last attempt. They, they, they stabbed one more knife into the Internet to hold on for a little bit longer. I, even smaller places, like I feel like our local pet supply store should jump on this. Yes. Why shouldn't I be able to get online and order what I need? Think about it. That's a 50-pound bag of dog food. If I could just get online, order it, pull up in front of the store, and you bring everything I ordered out to the car, that stops me from ordering it from Chewy.com, who delivers it straight to my house. I agree. I don't think that anything should be off the market when it comes to having stuff delivered to your door. It was pancakes, Jess. Pancakes. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. At we had poutine delivered to the hotel in uh, Toronto. Oh. 20 years ago, you never thought you'd have poutine delivered to your house. Right? Right? I mean, it's it's neat, and it is the way to go, and it will save retail a little while longer. And that's one of the things that the Jetsons got wrong, is that they did not have any Dean Dash or door deliveries delivering their foods to, uh, to their house. You are correct. That is something they did not show in that show. Yes. Can you hear my dogs? Oh, yeah. What's going on up there? <laughs> That's great. What is is JV is JV up there with them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you need to go up there? No, no. That's um, great. What was so? What was that all about? So Kira starts barking. Uh huh. She has she has a lot of attitude, and when the dogs won't play with her, like if Shelby doesn't want to play with her, or if Shelby has a toy and Kira thinks she should have that toy, she will bark at them, and then her bark is so high pitched it starts Shelby off howling. And as soon as Shelby starts howling, Memphis starts howling, and Kira has figured out she can howl as well. So they just start this chorus. So it's just one big <laughs> trigger. Yep. The, she's so vocal. I love that she's so vocal, though. That was cute. Yeah. My cats <laughs> only meow at me and paw at me when I'm either sleeping or they're hungry. <laughs> right. That's it. If I try to hear, you know, Mooch is sleeping. And those of you guys have seen us, like, on the live stream and stuff, Mooch is sitting in his little, like, basket right behind me here. And he looks at like he has no intentions on performing at all. They're still up there going. They're just barking and oh, playing. Oh, yeah, I could hear it. That'll be just be like our background music. 
Right. This is this is really good for her though because like I have the baby gate set up because I can I'm if, if anybody listening I'm watching her on the camera right now. This is good for her because we're not in the same room as her and she needs to learn that she's okay if we're not around and I think she's pretty comfortable when we're not around. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy listening to all these weeks and months and years that we've been friends and and all the dog stuff and all the effort it takes to put in the dogs. I was the worst pet owner as a kid. <laughs> the worst like i didn't do any homework i i didn't i didn't understand that the nuances of sounds you make really affect what the dogs think that's happening because it's not the words it seems like it's the intonations and the sternness versus the yep. hyperness of, of your tone of voice and oh my gosh i i've always petted wrong i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> So there's this thing mm -hmm. that we say at, like, the end of every podcast. And what is that? We did a thing. And what's the origins of we did a thing? I think that's just we were so excited for episode zero when we wanted to make this podcast happen. And we were so nervous. And if you guys go back and listen, the podcast sounds so much different than it does now. It was <laughs> so beautiful. It reminds me of early YouTube when you just didn't have a blueprint of how to do the videos or the vlogs. And you just did them. Right. And I think at the end, we were so excited we said we did a thing and i just left it in there because i thought that was natural like we we were, we're stoked we're happy too right and i think that you know there's certain things like even in the vlogs and stuff there's certain things that we say that people want to hear us say like on the dog channel it's when i'm making dog treats and <laughs> whenever i make anything with carob not chocolate carob <laughs> like <laughs> everybody wants a shirt that says not chocolate carob in, in all caps Yes. It, it, I'm like, how do you put that on a shirt? I just, well, you've done I'll it before. It out someday. <laughs> you've done it before. What, what's your? Give me a closing. Give me a closing dream big line. What, what's your little speech? It's different on each channel though. What's like, because it's different on the vlog channel. Because I tell everybody good night. I still don't know exactly how to say it on the dogs channel when I end everything. Because I was, you know, it's uh, when I thank people. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay positive, dream big, and we'll see you again soon is what I usually say on the dog's channel. But then I always like when I say when I get to the end of it, I'm always like, I don't know what to say after that. Because on the vlog channel, I always say good night, audience. Mm, but I don't yes. do that on the dog's channel because it's not a vlog. And I always get to the end of it and go, what do we say after this? Like, I don't know. It's still, it's still weird to me. And it, I started saying that for no reason, like, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Yeah. I said it at the end of one video and it was like, I like that. It sounds pretty good. I I like that. It's how I feel. It wasn't something I'd heard somewhere else. I just said okay, it. So and it was it natural. Kinda, yeah. And then it kind of just stuck. So kind of like the yay we did a thing. But you did have a shirt of the Dream Big, right? I do now. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't before, but I, I we do have one now. Yeah. I like that. And by popular we demand. <laughs> yeah. So you guys uh, in our Facebook group and pretty much everywhere else have been telling us that one, we need merch mm -hmm. and two, that yay, we did a thing needs to be on a shirt. Yes. So you can go to our new shop at ccmousepodcast.shop. Isn't that a cool? That's a cool domain. I like that. It flows right, <laughs> out, right off the ton. I bet none of you guys have ever gone to a dot shop before. I never have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ccmousepodcast.shop. So if you guys want to support what we're doing here and want to get some merch, there will be some of our logo merch on there. And then there will be a shirt and a coffee mug and whatever else I decide it'll look good on that actually says, yay, we did a thing. And it's done <laughs> super fancy. When you showed me that logo today, I was like, this is perfect. You actually had somebody design this. And I know you guys are thinking at home, like, it's just words, but it looks really snazzy. It is just words, but... It's words that we say at the end of every podcast. And I think that that's why people enjoy it. And it's something that people say, like I have a tendency on the on all my channels to say all the things. We're gonna do all the things. Mm -hmm. I say that a lot. I've always said that a lot. And I project that on the dogs a lot where Memphis is, you know, I, I'm always like, Memphis wants to do all the things. And hmm. I have people that ask for an all the things shirt. Yeah. I want a shirt that says all the things. <laughs> I'm like, how do you make a shirt that says all the things and make it purchasable and i kind of felt the same way about we did a thing and then i just went to my my fiverr guy <laughs> i'm I got, like i got hey. a guy i got a guy yeah Some yeah fiber. and that's pretty much they do the the fiverr guy that i used he did a couple designs for uh the animal facility as well so yeah. i really liked working with them and i'm like hey for a couple bucks here we go let's get this cool design yeah look good so hit us up at ccmousepodcast.shop There'll be mugs on there. I know uh, some of these guys saw when it was cold here, I was drinking tea out of my CC Mouse podcast mug. 
so you guys can pick up one of those so we can all drink out of it together. I try to drink out of it only during the podcast because I'm so afraid I'm going to break it. Yeah, we'll get we'll get some stuff added in there. And then if there's anything else that, you know, podcast related or something we say on the show that you guys want to see on a shirt or on merch or on anything, let us know. I mean, we're we're interested in doing more of that. This is something that we want to be able to keep doing. And uh, yay, we did a thing. We did a merch thing. So that'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. You can find us at ccmousepodcast.com, on Instagram at ccmousepodcast, YouTube, CC Mouse Podcast, or our new merch store, yay, at ccmousepodcast.shop. So until next week, we'll see you guys later. Same mouse time, same mouse podcast. Bye. Bye. Yay! Yay. We did a thing. We did a thing. On a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we made a shirt. We made a shirt. <laughs> <laughs>